two, one. One! Hello, every pony. It's your favorite Floopy Pony, Venomous Pie. You know me as the Pinkie Pie of the group. And welcome to another episode of Burning Maniacs Discuss. I have with me here this afternoon on Mod Pie, which is Little Looney. I just realized I was three years late to the wedding. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We have our Coco Pamel, which is Scapegoat. The Goat Empire shall take over all. You also have our cheese sandwich, which is Drizzle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about how things worked out, Katrine. I'll make it up somehow. Oh. Also, hi. <laughs> okay. And uh, a couple, couple things before we get started. Uh, we have two new main members here with us today. We, we have. Please welcome to the Brony Maniacs our new Applejack, which is Wolfie. Hey, that's my hat. It was tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Can't handle your farm animals, Applejack. <laughs> no. And, and and also because she did. So well with us last week, we decided to make her our new uh, a main member as well. Please welcome our new Sweetie Belle, no. Kitty Rosie. Hey, I'm the new Sweetie Belle. I'm so excited. And I'm also not as nervous as I was last time. <laughs> this is going to go good. And also, we have also a special guest with us today. Please, wel please welcome our good friend, Nivy Shy. Hello everyone, I'm new here, and I'm also extremely nervous too. Hmm. Nivey, sweetie, you'll do good. I was nervous too. I'm nervous too. <laughs> I'll give you a hug when this is all over, and I'm, my hand isn't on a steering wheel. I think we were all okay. nervous when we first started. Yeah, it, it, as I say, as I put down a banner of your picture, Nivey. Also, <laughs> also... Oh my goodness, I remember when I drew that. <laughs> hey look, it's Crimson. Hey, we got Crimson with us. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yay, just in, yeah, yep, just in time, Crimson. Just, just in time, buddy. Say hello to Crimson, our Sunset Shimmer. Hello, your pony. Your Phantom Thief will be lurking in the shadows. Well, why else would they call it the Phantom Thief? Persona! <laughs> Persona! Uh, also, uh, the artwork that you see of Snivy Shy here is made by our very own Kitty Rosie. All credit goes to her for the art. <laughs> and, uh, and now we got that out of the way. Uh, the episode we'll be discussing here is an interesting one, in fact. It's the one and only 100th episode of Friendship is Magic, Lies of Life. Woohoo! <laughs> And, and at the same time as I'm working on my 100th comic. What good timing. Yeah. Well, lucky timing. <laughs> so, so, you know how this... You know how, this, you, know how, you know how the deal is, but I'm also a penis and snivy shy since he, ha he is a special guest. Um, <laughs> here's how it works. We go to, to a random order on one positive for the episode. After that, we will go in a reverse order on our negative. One negative. And after that, we will give out our ratings for the episode. Okay. So, since you're our special guest, guest here, Snivy, why don't you start, start things off? Okay. So, first off, first off this, episode this episode was like a one once in a lifetime opportunity for the fans, really. So you liked uh, what the episode was meant to be? The episode was a clear like shout out to the fandom. Like there's some things that happen in the episode that wouldn't happen if the fandom didn't exist. <laughs> Mainly the Arabon stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you wanna <clears throat> point out? Huh? Anything else you wanna point out? Um yeah. I really have nothing else to say, or then it's just like a once in a 
lifetime opportunity. Derpy was adorable. The vinyl and Octavia stuff was cool. A ton of Doctor Who references. And that's really all I have to say. Alright, uh, who do you pass it off to? You can pass it to any one of us. Um, it's to Kitty. <laughs> okay, well, my positive, of course, I'm just in love with, um, how all, like, the, like, the background characters get to have, like, lines and everything that are just, like, focusing just on, like, the main six. And usually, like, whenever the background characters, like, talk, it's usually they only got, like, one or two words to say. And then after that, we don't see them for, like, the rest of the episode. Mm-hmm. And kind of like what Snivy said, I really like how Derpy got to say a lot and how Dr. Hooves was talking to her a lot. And we get to hear, like, more of his voice and... The whole vinyl scratch and Octavia thing was, like, super cool. I think that was, like, my favorite scene from it. Hmm. And and especially when Bon Bon and Lyra were, like, interacting a lot. And apparently Bon Bon was, like, or a Sweetie Drops was, like, saying that she was a spy or whatever. Uh, oh, and, we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. And, but yeah, I'm just... Mostly just loving, like, showing, like, more background characters. Because I think I like those a little bit more than the main six, to be extremely honest. <laughs> but, yeah, that's my positive about it. Alright, who do you pass it off to? Um, I'll give it to Wolfie. Alright, my positive was that we actually got to see, um, Celestia and Luna interact, even though, it, yeah, it was an argument. But you got to see them uh, play a bit more off of each other than what we had seen in this series, um, a couple of the other episodes. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, unfortunately, but we got to see more of the more sisterly interaction instead of, oh, this is the rulers. We got to see more of the sisterly interactions and then later on the love that they, sh- sisterly love that they had. Yes, I'm right with you, Wolfie. I've been waiting to see that, and we finally got it. Yeah, alright, so... I am... Let's see, who... Uh, at this point, only Snivy and Kitty has gone. Alright, and I'll pass it off to scapegoat. All right. Oh no! Wait, scapegoat's gone, huh? So uh, need to pay attention. No. He's How about here. you, then? No, scapegoat's what? here. Hello. Yep. We pass it off to you, scapegoat. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll say my positive for the episode was that it showed that. Near the end, Steve and Magnet learned a lot about generosity. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. He gave her tail. He gave his half of his mustache to save Cranky's hair that got lost. Oh, yeah. So it came full circle, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was sweet. Huh? Uh, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm a lot more invested in the uh, Cranky and Matilda's wedding than I was for Kane's and Shiny Armor's wedding. Yeah, that's true. But anyways, anything else you guys say, Scapegoat? Uh, that's about it. Alright, who do you pass it off to? Uh, I'll pass it to Floofy. <laughs> I mean, Venom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what Wolfie was trying to. But anyway, uh... Oh, gosh, where do I even begin? Uh, because this episode is a freaking acid trip. I mean, oh my gosh, a whole, all kinds of randomness and all kinds of just plain shenanigans happen in this. I can't even begin to describe it. Um, but if I had to put, I mean, there are a lot of, th- there are a lot of possibilities I could say about this. It's hard for me to choose one. Um, I suppose that, um, if you're talking about, like, my favorite scene in the episode, it would definitely be the scene with Vinyl Scratch and Octavia. 
uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, you really, if you really don't need to know uh, about the fandom as a whole to learn about these two and how they interact with each other. You could basically learn a bit about those two characters by just watching the episode without the fandom knowledge intact. It doesn't require much context. And, and also, when they uh, did the music together, it was just so cool. And and this is coming from a guy who absolutely hates dubstep. But yet, they they blended dubstep and classical music just beautifully in that scene. It, it, it kind of reminds me of a good episode of Epic Rap Battles. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's hands down my favorite scene in the entire episode. <laughs> Which is hard to pick, in all honesty. Uh, let's see. Who did I pass it off to? Uh... I guess I pass it off to you, Looney. Okay, then. I... Let's see. In watching this episode, I had a really hard time thinking about what my positive should be, since there's so much I love about it. <laughs> However, I think out of all the shenanigans this episode has to offer, I think my favorite scene is actually Mira Mira's speech at the end. Oh, yeah. Like how, like how she was talking about how every pony has their own stories they have to tell. Mm-hmm. Like, all these many background ponies only have personalities because we spotted them and came up with our own stories for them. Like, Derby wouldn't be a clumsy muffin mare, or Lama and Bomb Bomb wouldn't have a relationship. Quote unquote. <laughs> or Doctor Who's would be a time turner and so on. I like that they actually acknowledged all the fandom interpretations of the characters. Mm -hmm. And when you really think about it, this episode only exists because of the fans. It's us who allowed the show to carry on this fall. Hmm. Yeah, just to see what you mean, Looney. Alright, who do you, uh, who do you pass it off to? Uh, who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Crimson and Drizzle. Uh, since Drizzle said he wanted to go last, I guess I'll give it to Crimson. Alright, I just, uh, pinged him. So, he'll be along in a moment. But yeah, like, I, I do agree with Looney on the whole their speech. That was really awesome. It's a very good message, too. And I'll give him, I'll give him another minute. It, if not, then I'll just uh, pass off the drizzle. Aqua Silence. Just like our own slice of life. Pizza slice? No, not a pizza slice, but close enough. Alright, um, I guess you can uh, go ahead, uh, Drizzle. Alright, if Crimson does show up, I guess it'll help, but. Uh, my positive was Derpy's appearance in the episode and being ha having w much more screen time in one episode than the rest of them. I mean, Derpy has such a cute voice, too. Uh, that beginning scene with the uh, muffin. Yes. Like, muffin. I wish I could offer muffins when I screw up. I just uh, I just really appreciate Derpy's appearances, and I hope she'll she'll get more of a speaking role sometime down the road. I love I love Derpy. I love Derpy Who. And, and for, the, for the first time he, he she spoke in here. And, and, yeah, Mary. And, and also, congratulations, Dumpy Hoops. You actually spoke something without causing any controversy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, our uh, Crimson is returned, so take the floor, I Crimson. Guess I'm Crimson then. All right. Let's see, for Slash. Life for this episode for my positive. I was kind of interested to see the Doctor Who's pony. He, I thought that was his name at first, but I think it was Time Turner. 
You are correct. He's quite the character. I, l I like him already. Oh yeah, did we uh, mention the bowling scene? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the only time when you ever see Dr. Who's end up in a bowling alley with the dude. <laughs> Tell, tell that to someone who's not in the know, and tell me they would not be interested. Never thought I'd see a crossover between Doctor Who and the Big Lebowski. <laughs> huh. Basically, like, if the episode for Slice of Life wasn't that good without Tom Turner's, like, comedy, this episode wouldn't have been better from the beginning, but Derpy Who's for an exception was also included with it. Mm-hmm. And still, still uh, before, before, I'm not gonna lie, uh, you know the scene when Doctor Who showed up with that long scarf and <laughs> he trusts it? <laughs> yeah. But when he trusts it and goes, Alonzi? I actually face death. Huh? I was like, come, come on! Too obvious! Anyone who, <laughs> even those who have never even heard of Doctor Who in their life, would know that that's from Doctor Who. Yeah, the Baker guy. <laughs> come, come on, that, that's come on. too obvious. <laughs> the only thing that would have been even more obvious is if he had a tortoise. <laughs> well, I guess that's it for my positive. And now we move on to our negative. <laughs> back to Crimson. Yep, back to you, buddy. Back to you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Let's see, my negative for the episode was... <sighs> they should have planned the wedding thing a little bit perfect instead of messed up. That's what really annoyed me. It's Matilda. It's She's the worst note maker ever. Cough, friend indeed, cough. I mean, yeah, like, what is with Matilda in these bad notes? Like, in a friend indeed, she left a note saying she's moving to Ponyville in possibly the worst possible spot. And now she ends up screwing the date? Uh -huh. But mommy never asks Matilda for a checklist. <laughs> uh, I can't say I wasn't impressed, but still. Please work on your time management for when you're going to set up a wedding. For Celestia's sake, for every second of please do it right next time. At least it all went, it all went well, and if it weren't for all that, we wouldn't have all these shenanigans. Yeah, there wouldn't be all the chaos. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. Discord probably has something to do with it. All right. Uh, go go ahead, Drizzle. Go ahead, Drizzle. Oh, my negative. It was the um, it was the scene with uh, what is it? It was the scene where Bon Bon reveals to Lyra that she's of some sort, or like monsters or something. That's only brought up in this episode alone, and it's never talked about again. I just found it really stupid, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, out of all the. Out of all the character interactions, uh, Lyra Bob Bond is, I would say, is the weakest. Yeah. Then because uh, all of the ones in this episode. Then because uh, and I'm borrowing some of this from Soberquill. Uh, the main conflict of the episode is to prep up, prepare themselves for the wedding, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really wedding prep, though. Yeah, but with Lyra and Bon Bon, it that preparation's already finished. Instead, uh, it's the company- oh yeah, uh, Bon Bon is a secret agent. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, first yeah. off, isn't Lyra supposed to be the crazy one? Yes. And second- second thing I said was, huh. Huh. Well, that explains the why Bon Bon's voice constantly changes. I only got one thing to say in response to that. What? Lawson! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's so boring, and they never even talk about it again. It was just, I feel like it was just put there to be put there. Anyway, uh, got anything else? Uh, that's it. I guess you can give it back to.
Alright, go ahead, Looney. Alright, go ahead, Looney. Man, this is more of a nitpick, but I really don't like how Steven Magnet was shoehorned into this episode. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? I don't blame you there. Don't blame you there. Uh, Steven Magnet, the sea serpent. Oh, the, oh, I get it. Uh, yeah, how is it even possible for him to be in Ponyville? Mm. Uh -uh. He's, he's a sea serpent for Celestia's sake. How did he get to the spa? How did he get to the wedding? Why are he and Craig your best friends? Best friends. <laughs> yeah, and how did he even get there anyway? I remember all these questions running through my head when I first watched the premiere, and I still don't understand how he's there. Easy. He's slithered. Threw him there. Uh -huh. He uses his mustache as Ariel to fly. <laughs> oh my god, I'm done! <laughs> but was he really he uses his mustache to fly! I, 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 thought he, I thought he was a sea serpent. I thought he was a sea serpent, not a Chinese dragon. <laughs> that was my joke. <laughs> on, a, on, a, on, a side note, on a side note, that would actually be pretty cool. No, no, he is. for a dragon, not for someone. <laughs> He he uses a mustache as a feller. <laughs> uh, but if I wait for that train of thought, then I could say. I just feel like he was shoehorned into this episode. He doesn't really need a teaser. Yeah. And the logic of why he's there makes no sense. <laughs> because he's Cranky's best friend, but we didn't know. <laughs> How is he even Cranky's is best friend? Best friend. Bad, bad writers, get out of that. How can a donkey and a sea serpent be best friends and go on adventures together? I don't get it. Uh, oh, oh, hold my fanfic writers, get on that. Oh, oh, oh hold my, <laughs> oh, hold my, Kenan. This episode oh, is one giant fanfiction, <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. Yeah, that's my negative. It's bothered me ever since I first saw it. I, I guess it's my turn. Okay, um. Well, I kind of already mentioned my negative, but I was commenting on Drizzle's negative. Uh, Sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's my own fault. <laughs> but I do have something else. And that's the, uh, the bugbear. Oh, that thing. Okay, first off, why, why is it even there other than just a sh Shut the main six aside. And second of all, who came up with that design? It's hideous. Like seriously, when I first saw the bugbear thing, bugbear thing, I was like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> it's a fusion of a bee and a bear. It's a fusion of Beedrill and Ursaring from Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you get the pen being to the base? Earthring, uh, Beedrill, and, uh, Pangoro. Oh, my gosh. Oh, true. Pangoro's dark. Yeah. That's probably where it gets the evil from. Oh, God, the infantry for that comparison. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's my negative. I didn't like how the bug bear was designed. Uh, let's see. Who went before me? Uh, oh yeah, oh, it was scapegoat. Get go. Your turn, buddy. I think my negative my for negative. it was I didn't understand, I didn't understand the lore the to what a bugbear was or what it had to do with Tartarus. Yeah, that really did confuse me. The background to it didn't really t give much to explain anything at all. Predators are evil, don't you know? Remember, though, it didn't explain much, probably because the bugbear was simply added in, like Ven said, just to throw the main six off to the side. Yep. Oh, but it said something about Tartarus or something. Normally, I'd be angry about that, but, you know, compared to all the rest of the stuff that happened in Ponyville, this uh, is kind of low-key. And honestly, if they actually don't ditch up the actual battle, it would honestly be kind of lame. Yeah, I wasn't so much in one the battle, I was just confused by its lore. You, me, both. I mean, 
Also, on a side note, I love that good meta humor before we first saw the thing from Sweet Bell. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just another friendship problem, and it'll be cleared up in a half hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> that did make me chuckle. Uh, I think that's all I got. <laughs> Alright, uh, Wolfie? It's yeah, your turn. Uh, um, don't you think I know that? Anyway, uh, um. Well, I'd have to say that my negative would have to be. Like. Derpy, which is muffins, whatever we call her now, um, that she, she, she's trying her hard to help, trying her hard to help, and, like, everybody's, like, freaking out, oh, no, no, don't, don't, like, Cranky yelled at her at the beginning of the episode, which, how can you yell at that it slice of adorableness? Well, and, uh, like, she got accused of, like, just basically ruining the whole, it's like, not really her fault. I mean, well, I, um... Well, well, to be well, fair, well, Cranky well, was kind of addressed as Duffy like, like, a, like an actual person. I mean, yeah. if, I mean, if you've been in a Cranky situation, wouldn't you be a bit cheesed off? Kinda, but yeah. she did. She did. She did explain that she had someone working the printer that wasn't used to printing. So what's Dama Tiara when you need her? The one time I needed Dama Tiara and she wasn't even there. Yeah, <laughs> that was before she disappeared for two seasons. I know, right? I know, right? Yeah, yeah. What happened to Dama Tiara? <laughs> did the writers forget about her? Maybe because the fans didn't want her. <laughs> eh, fair enough. <laughs> Anyways. She's just a diamond in the rough now. Oh, ha ha. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, anything else you want to add, Wolfie? No. Alright. Uh, I suppose it's up to you, Kitty. Okay, so I agree with Drizzle and Venom. Like, oh, Celestia, what in the world is, is a bugbear? And second, Drizzle, oh, yeah, Asian on bond. I wish that would have came up in the beginning of some other episodes, but I just find it kind of not making sense that they put that in there. But, and another thing is, I just find it kind of like lucky that they didn't like have another episode kind of like this, just focusing on, like, background characters again, and, like, I kind of miss that, like, they always focus it on either key micro staters or main six, I'm just like, focus more on other characters, why just, please, like, um, I don't know if you, like, get what I mean, but, um, like, it was cool that, like, fan art came out for this, but I just wish that they could have done, like, more and everything throughout future seasons and such. But, yeah, I don't have, like, two chances to say for my negative, so yeah. that's, like, pretty much mine. They should have just added more to it, in my opinion. So you basically, you basically got nothing. <laughs> yeah, and they should have <laughs> they should have, they didn't add enough of the background characters, in my opinion. They, there should be more. <laughs> <laughs> the only complaint well, about the other. Uh, two two you know, slices of life. Maybe yeah, an episode. Because I really love therapy, so. Who, who doesn't, in all honesty? Well, we have been confirmed for a 200th episode. Maybe they're planning on making a second. Maybe. Yeah, they, they better. They should. Oh my gosh, 200 episodes. Jeez Louise. Mm hmm. Anyways, uh, you got anything else, Kitty? Nope, so it's Snivy's turn. Alright, your turn, Snivy. Okay, so like my main negative is not really just Steven Magnick at all, but like that one scene at the spa with him. Mm. That kind of got on my nerves a little bit. Because he was kind of just acting like a jerk. And it kind of did give off like a bad message that, that the, like, the wedding is important. You know? Hey. 
Hey, don't play, don't play Steven. Don't play Steven Magnus. Play in the wedding business. Yeah, but he kind of gave up the message that um, it's, it's not the meaning behind the wedding, it's the wedding itself that's important. Which is not really true. Yeah. yeah. I see what you mean. Maybe they did that so the kids would learn a lesson about it. Teach the kids about real life. Yeah, I hope they teach more real life lessons. Teach them maybe to be careful how you how you plan things. Okay, since uh, that that's pretty much everybody. Um, now it's time for us to do our rating. So, <coughs> so Crimson, what's your rating? Uh, five out of five for this episode. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see. Nivy, what would you give it? Um, I give this episode a five out of five. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm starting to sense a pattern here. <laughs> All right, right now. Uh, Kitty? Uh, Kitty? Five out of five. Bop, bop. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm seriously noticing a pattern here. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Crimson, you make my girlfriend really happy every time you do that, but she's not watching this one, so it's not working. <laughs> uh, uh, that's what your phantom thief is here for. Good. Good. Alright, uh, Wolfie? Wolfie? 5 out of 5. Another one, five eh? 5 out of 5. Yep, yeah, 5 out of 5. Uh, wow, all these fives. The religion of fives. I wonder what the final way to do it. Uh, characters. Uh, scapegoat? Uh, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Oh, so much for that. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving my honest right. I know. Yeah, we know, silly. Yeah, we know, but that's gonna drag it down. What is messing with you? Well, I must bid every pony you do. Your phantom thief must go. Oh, it. Yeah, well, Wait. Wait. Alright. As, as for me, uh, I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 5, and. I actually do want to expand upon this. Expand upon this. Uh, I really, but it's like I know what this episode is trying to be. You know, it's supposed to be a thank you letter to the, to the MLP fans for pretty much making the show what it is. And it's honest as that. I think it serves its purpose well. I honestly don't think this is an episode you should introduce any newcomers to the show. Oh no! Heck no! No, no one I introduced it as a standalone episode, but it's introducing supposed to... the main picks. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think that's what this episode's yeah. supposed to be. It's supposed to be a thank you note to the fans for making the show what it is. It's a treat for longtime fans. I believe that my emotion himself says that. And, and I could talk about this episode all day. Derby Dur being adorable as usual. Dot Dot the Hoos was pretty pretty cool. I love the bowling scene, by the way. Uh, the scene of Vinyl got an octave. The duo bet between Vinyl and Octave was freaking amazing. And oh my gosh, I think we made it through this entire thing without talking about uh, all the snags that happened afterwards, like while they were on their way to the wedding. Yeah. Oh yeah. I also, can only imagine what people, what people first. This being the first episode they watch would be like introducing the main six: Derpy. Matilda, Crank, Crank, <laughs> Lyra, Bon Bon, uh, Final Scratch, and the, the, the Dragon Assistant, the Sea Serpent. Oh, uh, one more thing. Gummy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, what is life? Is it only about getting your cute one? Yeah. Uh, Gummy's can a deep I mention something that. I think it's weird. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Can I mention something that I saw on my first watch through of the episode? I think I know what you're at, talking about, but go on. Oh, I know. Um, at eight oh seven, Derpy actually lost her wings. Eh, animation error. 
Uh huh. Enemy share. <laughs> oh, by the way, we we have ourselves a late arrival. Our spike has shown up. Say hello, Elite Yoshi. Hello. Yeah, traffic as usual. What are you gonna do? No, uh, but no, uh, but just going through our ratings. But you can say your one positive and one negative at this point. All right. Well, one thing that I definitely lo like about this episode, it would probably have to be. Well, I think just the whole episode entirely. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it was focusing on every, you know, the characters that in the fandom that, you know, everyone wished would have at least an episode to them was actually pretty nice to see. Yeah, it was. It was a real treat. Yeah. Especially with Mayor, especially with uh, Mayor Mayor's uh, little speech at the end. I honestly thought that it was pretty satisfying. That was my positive. Same. Yeah. And what about your negative? I don't really have any negatives. <laughs> That's a first. Wow, Yoshi. Nice. At least Yoshi doesn't have a negative thing to say. So, so uh, before, you get, before you get you ready, Yoshi, what was your favorite scene in the episode? Easily this... Easily this, um... I think it would probably have to be the scene with Luna and Celestia. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> I, I told mean, you the one the time where we don't see them act- that they- that they act like, you know, like normal townsfolk, you know? Because <laughs> it's- usually we see them in this light, usually, like, we see them as these teachers, or, the or you know, the, the, these the in people, distress. or these- you know, or these characters that the main six go to for advice or something. Unless they got a royal problem. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, anyways, uh, what would you give it, Yoshi? Five out of five. That was easy. <laughs> you so still I'm got the one you gave it for. for. Uh, hey, what about mine? Yep, you're, you're up next, Louie. Do I have to say it? Five out of five. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Alright, and, uh, Drizzle? Drizzle, you alive? <laughs> I am alive, I just am not hearing anything due to the weird wind over here. Do you need my rating? Uh, yes, we do. I agree with Scapegoat's rating, I'm gonna go with 4 out of 5. Okay. <laughs> 4 out of 5, okie dokie. So we're not all fives, thank goodness. No, that's, that's kind of expected. I mean, I know this episode's gonna be like split into fandom. And, <sighs> and before it comes, yes, this episode is fan pattering, pure and simple. But I still had a lot of fun. <laughs> mm hmm. And also, uh, wish, yep. uh, wish kid our Scootaloo couldn't show up today, but she. But uh, she did give her she did give her a rating for the episode, and it is a five out of five. Not surprised. Well, a lot of fives. Mhm. Mm and I think you could guess what the overall group rating is very quickly. Um, five. <laughs> or four and a half. Unless unless scapegoat and I put it at four point five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, alright, our overall group rating for Slice of Life is, not surprisingly, 5 out of 5. Hey. Yay! Ooh. And is that the first time the overall rating has been 5 out of 5 for us? Uh, nope. Nope, uh, I, th I believe we got a 5 out of 5 rating for, uh, Aurora Problem. I wasn't there at the time. Well, yeah, I know. But yeah, this is this has happened to us before, but it's pretty rare. For obvious reasons. If it's rare, I better get Banjo and Kazooie in here. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it's a remedy. <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it, it, anyways, um Okay. That if we haven't had anything else to say, I think that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching. Not sure what's going on for next week, but uh, we'll we'll keep in touch. Uh.
Also, a special thanks to Snivy Shy for being here with us. You did no great. <laughs> thanks for having me. Good job. And also, thank you. also thank you, uh, Kitty Rosie, for making that artwork so adorable. <laughs> thanks. Also, and also, congrats to Kitty, Kitty Rosie, and Wolfie as our new main members. Congrats to both of you. Congratulations. I already love being so well. I think it's really awesome. <laughs> I'm honored that you guys selected me. Hmm. <laughs> I told you, you need Wolfie to look at her. She's an honest apple. Uh, <laughs> it's a <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I, I gotta do something cringeworthy to take my mind off this boring street. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with cringe. I have been it's staring at nothing but road for the last six hours. Let me do something fun. <laughs> God, you're making me blush, dude. Anyway, you're blush is more. Anyways, uh, before we go, um, I want to say this, but no dose of irony whatsoever. Thank you, Emmy Larson. For, thank you for taking us too seriously, and thank you for creating this episode. This episode was a real treat. So, again, thanks, Emmy Larson. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Peace. Bye. Bye-bye. Whoopies out.